A storage facility at a local shelter is in danger of closing. My co-host Allison Bailey found out why. Safe and secure. When downtown Eastside resident Stephen Reed uses the storage facility at First United Church, he knows his things will be there when he gets back. Extra sweaters and my blankets. All the stuff you need to stay alive. Soon, though, the facility might not be here. Funding runs out October 20th. The church has managed to get $35,000 from three local foundations. And we've also applied for a grant through, uh, through Pepsi. It's the Refresh Everything um, contest um, for, for a grant for $25,000, which is currently underway. And but even if they win the grant, they'll still be 38000 short. That's a grand total of $98,000 a year, most of it to pay the six employees who work there. Construction and operating costs came from the city out of money given by the province. A city councillor, though, says the province is now running the whole shelter, but isn't paying for the storage area. When the province took over the operation of the shelter last year, for the next three years, we had assumed that the uh, operation of the storage facility was part of that operational funding. Uh, apparently not. Uh, that wasn't the case. For Stephen Reed, the facility is more than just a space to keep his stuff. Well, if, if the storage facility isn't here, then uh, the stuff I, I own would be stolen probably the very day that the storage wasn't available. For now, Reed can rest easy, but come next week, bin 55 may be back on the shelf for good. Allison Bailey in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. People with mental illnesses are often alienated and they can be misunderstood. One Vancouver man has been teaching members of this community to stand up with comedy. Gareth Maddock-Jones has more. David Grenier quickly discovered stand-up comedy was the rush he really wanted to chase. Uh, it's a great rush, being able to make people laugh. It's just, it's the best high I know of. David is also clinically depressed, but he discovered performing comedy helped him deal with his depression. Soon after, he would start Stand Up for Mental Health, an organization that teaches others with similar mental illnesses how to perform stand-up routines so they can benefit from making people laugh. Well, I think what <clears throat> stand-up does, I think it does a few things. First of all, it's a great confidence builder to be able to get up in front of a room full of people and make them laugh. And I think it's also very good for your, therapeutically, to be able to talk about things that happened in the past. Stand-up for mental health has become so popular, David's team of comedians have been spreading the laughter to other communities. We tour all over the province and, and we're hoping to go across the country and, and different places and stuff. So really makes me feel like I've got a sense of purpose and something to look forward to. Most of the people who enter David's program have never done comedy, so he makes sure they go beyond just laughing at their own jokes. That's kind of my role, is to kind of be the filter and make sure that anything that gets makes it into the acts is going to be funny not only to them and their friends, but to a general audience. David's approach of using stand-up comedy to help people overcome their mental illnesses is now being recognized by the medical community. I was just in Rochester, New York, doing grand rounds for the University of Rochester Medical School. They brought me in as a speaker to talk about this. I'd say that medical people in general are very intrigued by this um, and that the response has generally been very positive. Grenier's outreach has now expanded across the country. He is currently on a cross-Canada tour of university campuses with his team of comedians. They are hoping to reduce the stigma of mental illnesses, not only through their humor, but also their courage. Thank you. Gareth Maddock-Jones in Abbotsford for BCIT Magazine. The story of the Chilean miners has captured the hearts of the world, and reporter Joe Perkins found a local spin to put on it. Yesterday, Matt Human watched as it unfolded. And while he agreed the Chilean miners' rescue was a miracle, he didn't know what he could do. So like many of us, he watched. There he goes. This is the first time they sent down the first rescuer to come get them. Yeah, well, I was paying attention right at when it happened on August 5th. I, uh, I just caught the news that day. And ever since then, I've just kind of kept tabs on it through CNN, uh, GlobeAndMail.com, like just on the net. And apparently so of others. This week, TrendsMap.com, a site that follows local Twitter trends, showed that some of the most tweeted words in Canada were underground and surface. But Matt doesn't tweet, so he used Facebook. Unbelievable. 
So yeah, last night I was online and debating, you know, so I put it on, well, obviously I went automatically to Facebook and I said, study my sales promotion exam or watch these guys get rescued. Uh, 